the black rhinoceros once ranged widely across much of sub-Saharan Africa. Over the past century, relentless poaching for horns, habitat loss, and political conflict reduced their numbers by more than 95%. The eastern subspecies, found primarily in Tanzania and Kenya, has been one of the most severely affected. From tens of thousands, their population fell to just a few hundred by the 1990s. Conservation action prevented total extinction, but many populations today remain small and fragmented. This fragmentation creates a key problem, genetic isolation. When populations are small and isolated, animals are more likely to breed with close relatives. Over time, this leads to inbreeding, and with inbreeding comes reduced fertility, lower survival rates, and increased vulnerability to disease. This is known as inbreeding depression. Conservationists have long used translocation as a tool. That means capturing animals from one population and moving them to another to increase numbers and genetic diversity. Another less interventionist tool is natural dispersal. If habitats are connected through corridors, open land or overlapping ranges, rhinos can naturally move from one population to another bringing in fresh genes without human intervention. Both strategies aim to achieve the same goal, maintain genetic health and reduce inbreeding. But until recently, we lacked detailed data on which works better in the long run. The 2025 study by Melia et al applied whole genome sequencing to multiple rhino populations in Tanzania. The researchers examined rhinos from closed, intensively managed populations, fenced or isolated with little to no natural dispersal. From translocated individuals and their descendants, rhinos moved between populations or from ex situ populations. From naturally dispersing individuals, rhinos that moved between neighboring connected populations. They analyzed the genomes for two key indicators, runs of homozygosity, long identical stretches in the genome that reveal inbreeding, and genetic load, the burden of harmful mutations that might remain hidden until inbreeding makes them more likely to appear. The results were both intuitive and surprising. Closed populations showed the highest homozygosis, meaning high levels of inbreeding, not surprisingly since isolation limits mating options. Translocated populations showed lower inbreeding in the short term. On the surface, this seemed like success. Moving rhinos around does bring in genetic diversity. However, and here is the surprising part, Translocated populations carried a higher genetic load. In other words, they had more harmful mutations hidden in their genomes. These mutations can persist unnoticed until future inbreeding reveals them, creating long-term risks. Naturally dispersing populations had the best outcome. They had lower homozygosity, meaning less inbreeding, and they also maintained a lower genetic load. Natural movement allowed harmful mutations to be purged gradually over generations. While translocation can provide short-term relief, natural dispersal is the more sustainable strategy for preserving genetic health in eastern black rhinos. What does this mean for conservation in practice? Connectivity matters. Corridors, unfenced areas, and cooperative management between reserves are essential. Rhinos need space to move. Translocation has limits. It should not be abandoned, but used carefully, especially when natural dispersal is impossible. Genetic screening of source and destination populations is critical. Closed populations are vulnerable. Even if protected from poachers, rhinos in fenced and isolated reserves face the silent risk of inbreeding depression. Long-term planning is essential. Genetic risks may not appear for decades. 
Decisions today affect not just current populations, but rhino generations to come. There are also important ethical questions. Do we want rhinos to survive only as carefully managed, fenced-in animals or as wild creatures that move freely across landscapes? Are we justified in stressing individual animals through translocation, knowing it carries both short-term benefits and long-term risks? How do we balance conservation goals with the rights of local communities whose land might be used for corridors? And finally, what responsibility do we have to future generations, both human and rhino, to make choices that maintain the species' evolutionary potential? These are not questions science alone can answer. They require dialogue, policy and values. So where does this leave us? Rhino conservation is not just about protecting numbers, but also about preserving genetic processes, the underlying fabric of life that ensures resilience and adaptability. The solutions lie in building and maintaining wildlife corridors, coordinating conservation across regions and national borders, integrating genomics into routine monitoring, using translocation strategically, not as the default, ensuring communities share in the benefits of conservation so that corridors and dispersal are socially and economically viable. The fate of the eastern black rhino depends on ranges and fences, as well as on genes, landscapes and choices about how we value wildness. Allowing rhinos to disperse naturally is more effective in the long term than relying heavily on human translocation. For the general public, the message is straightforward. Protecting large, connected habitats is the best way to secure the future of the black rhino. For conservationists, the challenge is complex. Balancing protection, connectivity and genetic health. And for all of us, the lesson is profound. Conservation is not just about saving animals from extinction. It's about allowing them to live as nature intended, wild, connected and free.